Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Boram Lin, Assistant Professor in the Department of Health and Kinesiology at Texas a and Kingsville. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about one of my research projects, the physiological and biomechanical responses to different wetsuit during front crawl between male and female. Here's a little bit of background. Uh, the research question comes from the thought that how can I and how can people improve triathlon performance? Triathlon is an endurance multi-sport that consists of swim, bike, and run over various distance. Swimming is generally the first portion of triathlon race due to the safety matters such as drowning, hypohyperthermia, and muscle cramps. In addition, swimming performance can affect the cycling portion right after swimming and overall race, even though the swimming portion is only 10 to 15% of the total entire race. Uh, many factors influence swimming performance, but these two um, diagrams represent exercise physiology and biomechanical perspectives. So index of coordination and total time gap between left and right and upper and lower extremity um, are related to stroke length and stroke frequency. And this, both parameters uh, determine swimming velocity. So these three, are velocity of center of mass, hands and feet, and velocity is associated with the total energy demand and energy cost. For example, how fast convert chemical energy to mechanical energy and how much energy is needed to cover a given distance or achieve max velocity. So all these parameters affect swimming performance. The second diagram is very similar to the left one, but it has um, muscle activity and profile profiling efficiency and drag force. So in biomechanical perspectives, uh, the main goal of successful swimming is increase propulsive force and decrease uh, resistive drag force. So these parameters intertwine each other. So swimming in a pool and swimming in open water uh, has some similarity, but it's totally different um, environment. So an uh, open water swim, uh, triathlete or open water swimmer had to deal with uh, the wind, choppy water, poor visibility, unstable water temperature, and other competitors. So uh, the triathlon vessel is an essential piece of equipment during triathlon race. Uh, so when triathletes swim with a wetsuit, they can expect potential performance benefits. So swimming with a wetsuit allows uh, swimmers to maintain streamline easier due to additional buoyancy and the smooth surface. And uh, previous research uh, demonstrate that the swimming with a wetsuit change stroke kinematics. And previous study observed uh, participant could swim faster with higher stroke frequency or longer stroke length uh, the cover given distance with less energy cost. So lean swimmer and male swimmer and novice swimmer can more benefit from the wetsuit because of the body density and poor swimming skills. The many study uh, has compared physiological and biomechanical variable between swimming with or without wetsuit. So normal wetsuit versus single type of wetsuit. So uh, Tropedol 1996 conducted research to compare physiological variables with four wetsuit conditions. No wetsuit, short wetsuit, sleepless, sleepless wetsuit, and full suit wetsuit. However, the study was conducted in, in mid 90s, more than 25 years ago, and only five male participants were recruited. So triathlete choose to wear different types of wetsuit such as uh, short sleeve and long sleeve and sleeveless and blue shorts, or decide not to wear a wetsuit based on their preferences and body type and temperature regulation. Uh, furthermore, there's an inconsistent uh, result regarding stroke kinematics and performance. So not all performance improved uh, with wetsuit and previous study reported increasing either stroke length or 
stroke frequency and sometimes both. So uh, to our knowledge, uh, there's a limited empirical evidence on changes in physiological and biomechanical uh, responses to different wetsuit between gender. So the purpose of study was to investigate if there are any gender differences in physiological or biomechanical responses between four uh, wetsuit condition, uh, no wetsuit, blue and shorts, and uh, sleepless wetsuit and full sleep wetsuit. So this is the descriptive data from both male and females. Uh, we measure height, body mass, waist circumferences, um, arm length, and person body fat, and VO2 max. So female participants are shorter, lighter, and small waist circumferences, but more person body fat compared to the male participants. And when we look at the VO2 max value, uh, we speculate that the participants are well-trained uh, recreational swimmer. Now, when it comes to swimming, VO2 is generally uh, about 10 to 15% lower than cycling and running VO2 max. So uh, this figure uh, show the experimental design. So when participant came to the lab, we measure their anthropometrics then VO2 max with a regular swimsuit. After that, participant complete four, four minutes swimming with different rest condition at their 80% of VO2 max. Uh, the condition was randomized and predetermined. So every participant swim different order. And all swimming session, including VO2 max tests, were performed in swimming form. So this is um, the wetsuit that I use, full sleeve and sleeveless in blue and shoe shorts uh, from Hoop Design, the manufacturer. And GoPro was used uh, for the references to count the number of strokes and if missing something during data collection, just in case. And physiological variable were collected uh, using metabolic card with a mixing chamber, heart rate monitor. And this is the picture uh, during uh, data collection. So statistical analysis were performed using SPSS 28. Uh, alpha level was set at 0.05. And two by four repeated measure ANOVA was performed to see whether or not there are interactions between uh, gender according to different Western conditions. And when uh, the F ratio was found to be significant, a planned pairwise comparison was performed using uh, LSD to see if uh, there were significant difference between conditions. So. Uh, Dependent variable, bo 2 bco 2 and minute ventilation, and REL, and heart rate, and cost of transport, and RPE, stroke rate, stroke length, and stroke index. Result, um, no interaction exists between Western condition and gender, p-value greater than 0.05. In addition, there were only statistically significant difference between uh, significant differences in VCO2 and RER, p-value less than 0 0.001 between gender. Other than VCO2 and RER, uh, no difference was, no differences was, uh, no differences were observed in all other dependent variables. This table uh, show the average value for each uh, dependent variable between male and females. So first low uh, indicate the wetsuit condition, no wetsuit, blue shorts, sleepless, and full sleep wetsuit. And uh, the first column indicate the dependent variable, VO2, VCO2, uh, mini ventilation, heart rate, RER, uh, RPE, cost of transport, and stroke kinematics. So uh, VO2 value uh, during blue and shorts, uh, sleepless wetsuit and full sleep wetsuit decreased compared to the uh, no wetsuit condition. And the CO2 value are significantly different between gender, as you can see. And uh, since VCO2 values are different, 
RER, which is the ratio between VCO2 over VO2, values are uh, significantly different between gender. Uh, the cost of transport values are also decreased uh, while swimming with any types of suit conditions compared to the no suit condition, no wetsuit condition. So these figures show the percent differences in VO2 compared to no wetsuit condition in each individual. So left column uh, indicate six participants, uh, male participant, and right column graph here um, indicate eight female participants. So all y-axis are the person differences um, and x-axis in individual test speed. So light gray graph, uh, person differences in wearing shorts versus you no know, wetsuit condition, light blue, um, slipless wetsuit compared to you no know, wetsuit condition, and dark gray graphs are person differences between full sleep wetsuit and no wetsuit. So every participant reduced their physiological demand when they swim while wearing shorts, slipless wetsuit, and full sleep wetsuit compared to the normal swimsuit. So uh, we observed the less physiological demand at a given intensity. And also, it's not clear how body composition and body type influence the outcome of the result in this particular study. Uh, when calculating the estimated swim uh, distance based on the swimming pace and duration of swimming, uh, it's 265 meter. However, the shortest distance of swimming portion of triathlon is 700, uh, 750 meter, and it's all the way up to 3.8 kilometer. So recreational swimmer may stay in water about two to 20 to 30 minutes to more than an hour uh, during the full Ironman race. Therefore, the small changes may affect a significant difference during and after swimming portion, but we do not know what will happen if we collect data over a long distance. Participants were maintained well uh, their stroke kinematics regardless of wetsuit condition. Um, and based on data, we speculate that male participants may use more carbohydrate as an energy substrate uh, more than female participants. Uh, it may be their nutrition or natural body responses when they swim at a given uh, swimming pace in this study. Uh, a limitation of this study was small and unequal sample size and it's too early and hard to general generalize it based on this uh, single study. Uh, the major similarity between swimming in a Fulham and open water was uh, that participants could swim continuously without having the turn every 25 and, and 50 meter mark, but it's unknown if the swimming Fulham fully replicates open water swimming. Uh, furthermore, swimming in a Fulham allowed participants to maintain the same um, swimming pace throughout the experiment session which may not be ideal for actual race situation due to currency, visibility, fatigue, and other very variable factors. So uh, there's a still gap between the Fulham and open water swim in uh, uh, practical perspectives. And wetsuit fit itself is also a limitation. Um, there's a side chart provided for, from the manufacturer, but only based on height and um, weight only. So there's a, some limitation to uh, find the perfect wet speed for each individual and gender. So uh, take home message, swim with a wetsuit are beneficial and reduce physiological demand at a given distance, uh, no influence, uh, stroke kinematics, and burn shorts, also a good option to take. And body composition may not a huge play role in um, swimming based on uh, different types of wetsuit. And no significant differences between gender. And here's a recommendation uh, of this study. Recreational triathlete can choose the wetsuit based on their preferences and body types uh, without changing uh, stroke patterns. 
So uh, I appreciate for your attention. Uh, I'm happy to answer any question you might have. So if you have any question regarding uh, my presentation or interested in swimming and triathlon research in general, please reach out to me. Uh, here's my information and email address. Thank you so much and hope you uh, have a great day. Thank you.